Hello, so today we are going to do a full face of Glossier skincare because I've done the makeup Glossier Play, so it's only fitting to do the skincare. Now, I have been using Glossier products or I guess skincare products for maybe two years and that was actually the first thing that I probably brought from the line. I did buy everything in stages, so some products I've been using longer than others, but I have given everything quite a fair shot, so I wanted to share my thoughts on everything with you. I know for some of you, you're not really interested in the color cosmetics that Glossier has and more of you are probably interested in trying some of the skincare stuff. So I have every skincare item from Glossier and we're gonna put everything through the test today. So if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on the Glossier skincare line, then stay tuned. As always, I keep a very detailed description box so you can check out timestamps in the description box below if you are only interested in hearing and seeing a certain product. So always be sure to check down below. Hello, we are now in the bathroom and I realized that my bathroom is really not made for filming. It took quite a bit to get this setup configured. So hopefully the footage turns out nicely. Anyway, like I said, I have everything from the Glossier skincare line. I didn't buy the, all these things at once. I kind of accumulated it through the years, but I have all of the masks, um, the serums. I even have the cotton rounds. So step one is to obviously cleanse the skin. Now I'm a big believer of a second cleanse. I love to double cleanse because I've never found that cleansing once was enough. I like to first remove all of the makeup and then I like to go in with whatever I'm going to actually use to clean my skin. The biggest gap I noticed with the Glossier skincare was that how they never had a makeup remover. They had a cleanser, which was nice, but they never had anything to like really clean off the makeup, especially waterproof makeup. But they actually just recently released this milky oil and you can maybe see that I've used quite a bit of it already. I'm almost at like the halfway mark at this point and I've only had it for maybe three and a bit weeks. And I actually do like this waterproof makeup remover but I don't necessarily think that it is better than the other makeup removers out there. But this is called the Milky Oil and it is one of those bi-phase products. Now I've already kind of shaken this one up, but I do have a second bottle. So this is what it does look like. You have kind of this opaque white, it almost looks like a milk um, at the top. And then you have what looks like water, but is almost kind of like an oil, a lightweight oil consistency. So typically I would use the Garnier Skin Active Micellar Water. This is the one for waterproof makeup, um, which I really like. And it's definitely a lot more cost effective because you get a huge bottle for, um, I mean, maybe if you get it on sale, it's like eight to $10 versus this, which was I think 18 and you get 3.4 fluid ounces. I guess the only good thing about the size is the fact that you can travel with it, but then you could also probably decant this into a travel bottle. So for the purposes of a full face of Glossier skincare, we're gonna use the Glossier cotton rounds. I just wanna say that these are not my favorite cotton rounds in the world. And they're about, they're $5 I think for, uh, for 60, I was gonna say 100, so it's 60. So that is quite pricey. My favorite cotton, to remove my makeup is the Muji, which is 450, but you get how many in here? 165, so you get quite a lot more. These ones are okay, they're not my favorite. The Glossier rounds come stamped with the Glossier logo, which is cheesy, but I guess cute, definitely on brand. So because this is a bi phase, you have to shake it up very well. I like to do a generous dose of this onto the cotton pad or cotton round. And then I like to place it on my eye and just let it soak in for probably 30 seconds. I find that with any makeup remover, it just works better when you leave it to soak a bit. Even the Garnier Micellar solution, the Bioderma solution is just works better when you just let the makeup remover do all the work as opposed to tugging and tugging at your eye. So this is what one swipe looks like. It took away most of the glitter. I obviously have quite a bit left on my eye, so I'm gonna just remove the rest with the other side. I'm just going in with a third cotton round just to get the last like remaining bits of glitter and eyeliner. This typically is my routine. I use one cotton square around for each eye and then I use a third one just to get anything remaining and also just quickly do the rest of my face. 
I'm also going to take this cotton pad and take the lipstick off. Removes lipstick pretty well. I normally don't wear glitter, but I'm gonna go in with a fourth cotton pad. This is my Muji one and just try to get all the bits of glitter off. So one of the things I do like about this milky oil is the fact that it doesn't leave a oily film on your skin. So unlike cleansing oils, when you put it on your skin, obviously it's breaking down the makeup, but it's an oil residue that's being left on your skin, so you have to rinse it off. This, you definitely have to rinse off also, but if you don't like that film that some products will leave on your skin, like for example, the Garnier one, um, it's very mild, but I do still feel it on my skin. So ultimately we ended up using three cotton rounds and a square, but you can see how you know it picks up makeup pretty well, even the waterproof mascara that I was wearing, and um, it takes it everything off. The glitter, although, is just very difficult to remove, but uh, if you just wear everyday regular makeup, this milky oil will be nice. Next up is the Milky Jelly Cleanser. Now this is probably one of my favorite products from Glossier. I like how gentle it is. Uh, very similar to the Hydrating CeraVe Cleanser, Hydrating Cleanser from CeraVe, CeraVe. And it's gentle, it doesn't foam up, but it's really nice. This does remove makeup well, just not waterproof makeup or you know heavy duty mascara and eyeshadow, but it is nice for actually cleansing the skin. I also like how it comes in two sizes. So it comes in a travel size and also your original size. I like the travel size, of course, for when I'm traveling. I do like to actually travel with this cleanser because it is so easy and it's very nice for sensitive skin, which I feel like my skin is once I get off a plane. So I basically just take one solid pump and I use that to massage into my skin. In the mornings, I will actually use this on wet skin, but in the evenings when I'm removing makeup, I actually use it on dry skin. So I do use it almost like a cleansing oil where I massage it into the skin, into dry skin, and just try to break down the makeup and then rinse it off. So I like the cleanser for a second cleanser for when I'm not using a lot of makeup. I don't find it enough alone when I am wearing a full face or even foundation. I do find that using a makeup remover first or even a cleansing oil is better. This is the Soothing Face Mist Rose Water Spray. Now this is really nice just to spray onto your face. It's just a mist, you know, it doesn't do anything crazy, but it is nice to keep the barrier of your skin. Now I hate to use this word, but moist. I definitely like the spray on this. It just sprays it really nicely and really evenly. And I also really enjoyed the rose water scent. So this is the solution, which is an exfoliating skin perfecter. This is a toner. It's a combination of salicylic acid, AHAs, BHAs. It does come in great packaging, of course, much like a lot of Glossier products do. I do like the pump on this. It disperses product very nicely. So this is just a toner. So I would use it after skincare. And it is supposed to minimize your breakouts and maybe improve the texture of your skin. I have not noticed that to happen. In fact, sometimes when I use this, not all the time, but sometimes my skin tends to react quite negatively. Um, it hasn't happened lately, but I have had it uh, react on some occasions. Okay, let's talk about the masks now. Normally I would do the mask kind of in the middle of my skincare routine. I would do the cleansing and then the masks and then I would wait 20 minutes, 30 minutes, take the mask off and do the rest of my skincare routines. There's two masks here. One is the Moisturizing Moon Mask and the other one is the Mega Greens Galaxy Pack. Now the Moon Mask is for hydration. The Galaxy Pack, the Mega Greens Galaxy Pack is for detoxifying. So I actually sometimes we'll use a combination of this. So I'll use Mega Greens in my T-zone and then the Moon Mask on my cheeks. So I always pick up these little spatulas from Sephora. I just find them to be really great for picking up products, especially for masks like this, so that you know you're not necessarily contaminating the um, the jar of the product. And it's also just great for picking product out. The Mega Greens mask will actually dry, and you will still be able to see it on the skin. The Moon Mask, however, when it dries, um, it dries clear. So it's almost like it's being absorbed by your skin. I wouldn't say that these masks have been life-changing, but I've also never had a negative reaction to them. Like I said, the Moon Mask is for hydration. Now this is equipped with squalane and hyaluronic acid. It's very similar. It reminds me a lot of the 
uh, jet lag mask from Sunday, Sunday, summer Fridays. I was going to say Sunday Riley. Um, it reminds me of that in the texture and just how it makes your skin feel. I will say that this is definitely a, a softer formulation. The summer Fridays definitely feels more like a heavy cream, but this is really lightweight and fluffy almost. Okay. So the mask is on both of these masks suggest that you allow it uh, 20 minutes to soak in. So we're going to let 20 minutes go by and then I'll be back. It has been 20 minutes and as you can see the mask has dry slash absorbed into the skin. I applied quite a bit on the cheek area which is why you see quite a bit of product still left but in the areas where it was thinly applied you'll notice how it has just kind of absorbed into the skin or disappeared. My skin in those areas feel very I wouldn't say oily but there is definitely like a film on the skin. For the mask, I usually take a muslin cloth. This one just happens to be from the body shop, very plain, and I use that damp all over the face to wipe everything off. I find that's the easiest sometimes, especially with the clay masks. So the masks are pretty easy to remove. You could just rinse with your hands and get it all off that way, but I just find a muslin cloth to be easier in general. And then usually I will mist my skin a couple more times before I go in with skincare. So this is where I would go in with the serums. Now there's three here. We have Super Bounce, Super Glow, and Super Pure. So Super Pure out of the three is probably my favorite. It's the niacinamide. I just find that niacinamide works really well with my skin. So this one is great, especially for when I'm breaking out. Then there is Super Glow, which is vitamin C, which is probably not my favorite. Also, the product itself is not orange, it's clear. It just looks like it would be orange because of the bottle. And then there is Super Bound, which is probably my second favorite because this is the hyaluronic acid. So for when my skin is feeling a little dry and dehydrated. These bottles are tiny, tiny, tiny. They are half a fluid ounce. A typical bottle would be a fluid ounce. So this is one from Indie Labs. And although the sizing doesn't look that different, uh, this is what full fluid ounce and this is only half a fluid ounce. So you do go through these much quicker and also they're quite a bit pricey. The website doesn't really give you a lot of instructions about what to do and what not to do. It says you can use each of these once a day and you can combine them, but you're only supposed to use one per day. So it's not recommended that you use one morning and evening. It's recommended that you only use one once per day. So I'm starting off with the Super Bounce. I like this just for, again, that hyaluronic acid. And then usually I reserve Super Glow for the mornings, which is when I typically do vitamin Cs. And then I'll use Super Pure or a niacinamide in the evenings. So you just do a couple of drops and I will just spread it all over my skin. The serums absorb nicely. It's just that they're very basic, so don't expect too many great things happening to your skin. But I do find that they're great starter serums, I guess. Although you can find similar products for less money, even probably more effective products for less money. So then we move on to moisturizer. Now we have the priming moisturizer and then the priming moisturizer rich. So the priming moisturizer rich comes in a very luxe, bottle, I guess. It's 1.7 fluid ounces and it just comes with a tub. It's very heavy cream. Again, I like to use these little spatulas to distribute product and it is very thick and heavy and it also has like this uh, lavender fragrance to it, which is not my favorite. So you can see here on the back of my hand, it is a very thick and creamy moisturizer. It does have such a strong fragrance and I do find it a bit irritating on my skin. So I actually never use this. I tried it a few times and every time I tried it, I ended up getting um, like whiteheads all over. So I just stopped using it. If I do use it, I'll use it on my neck, but I never put it on my, my face anymore. I just find that lavender oil to be, I guess, very irritating on the skin. And normally that's not the case with me. A moisturizer I do like though is the priming moisturizer. And the Beau actually likes this one too. I gave him a tube of it because he ran out of his moisturizer and he likes it because he, like me, likes the fact that it's lightweight and it absorbs nicely into the skin. This one has a very similar texture to the Embryolisse 24 hour cream. And I just prefer this one a lot more. I don't really use this in the evenings though because I don't find it to be moisturizing enough unless I layer a, an oil over it but it is nice for the daytime. It does wear well under makeup. I don't find that 
you know, pills or anything like that. This is supposed to be equipped with hyaluronic acid and some antioxidants. So it is supposed to also benefit your skin slightly in the hydration factor. Now, if I am breaking out, that is when I would go in with the zit stick. Now the zit stick is a benzoyl peroxide acne treatment gel. And I quite like this. It has one of those fancy little roller balls. So it is supposed to be cooling, but I do like the product itself. Sometimes I actually find the packaging to be a hindrance because if I just want to spot treat a specific area, the roller tip is just such a huge surface that I can't necessarily get that area only. I have to get like that area and the area around it. They recommend to put this on as bare skin as you can, but I prefer to do it after moisturizer. And some of you might find that more effective also because benzoyl peroxide can be very drying and irritating. So if you have a layer, on top of your skin already before you apply this, it might help you a little bit. I don't find the results with the zit stick to be dramatic or anything, but I do find that if I use it in the evenings, right before I go to bed, it does reduce the redness the next day. It won't necessarily take the blemish away altogether, but it does calm it down a little bit. So the last skincare thing is the Invisible Shield. Now this is unfortunately not available in Canada and it will probably never be available in Canada, mainly just because we have very strict regulations in terms of beauty products. And I guess this doesn't quite meet our SPF standards, but nonetheless, I did pick it up while I was in LA last fall because I had to try it. I heard so many great things. Now this is a chemical sunscreen. I prefer a chemical sunscreen in the winter time when the sun isn't that strong and a physical sunscreen in the summertime when the UV rays are very strong and high. And that's just a personal preference. I've never had a reaction to either sunscreens. This comes in an airtight bottle and you get one fluid ounce of this. Typically sunscreens come in slightly bigger quantities because you do have to apply quite a bit onto your skin for it to be effective, but it is a very lightweight product. When you do put it on the skin, it is very transparent. I do like this because it is invisible on the skin. It absorbs really nicely. It doesn't give you a white cast, but again, it is a chemical sunscreen. That might be good for some people and bad for others. I personally don't have um, a sensitivity to it, so I don't mind it, but it definitely will probably dissuade some people from purchasing it. So that is a full face of Glossier skincare. Let's go back and sit down and do a roundup of the product. So let's start with the Milky Oil. Now, I definitely think Glossier needed a product like this because their Milky Jelly Cleanser is just not the best for removing that waterproof makeup. It never claimed to be, and it just was not great for that. So they definitely needed this product, but do you need this product? I don't think so. It does work well, so if you wanna try it, I don't think you would be disappointed. But considering there's a lot of other really great makeup removers, even from the drugstore that are a bit more affordable and you get more product, this is not a necessity in my mind. The Milky Jelly Cleanser, however, is definitely a top shelf product for me. I always have a bottle of this kicking around. I love to travel with this, like I mentioned. It's a really great gentle cleanser. It's pH balanced, it's gentle but effective to remove very minimal or non-waterproof makeup and this is perfect for a second cleanse for me. The Milky Jelly Cleanser comes in two sizes. So this is the travel size one. It's only two ounces, it's $11. Then the original size is $22 for, I don't remember how much product you get in there, but quite a bit. The cleanser also comes in their skincare set, which comes with the cleanser, the priming moisturizer, and also a bomb.com. I do love a face mask. So I'm pretty happy with these ones from Glossier. So the Mega Greens Galaxy Pack, which is again, the detoxifying mask is really nice. Um, I do like the Kaolin Clay. It dries really nicely, but it doesn't um, tighten the skin to the point where it's uncomfortable. It's also quite easy to remove. I also like the moisturizing moon mask. Like I said, it's very similar to the Summer Fridays jet lag mask. This one I feel like just has a little bit more of a thicker consistency, but this one feels really nice on the skin. This guy's also equipped with really moisturizing ingredients like squalane and hyaluronic acid. You can buy these individually for $27 each or as a duo for $48. And I personally like to use 
them both simultaneously. I don't think these are a necessity though. Again, I find that there's other masks out there that work just as well. However, if you are looking for a product similar to the jet lag mask at a slightly lower price point, then I don't think you would be disappointed with the moisturizing moon mask. I do not love the solution. It does not work well for me. I find it to be very irritating on the skin on most days. Lately, it hasn't been irritating, but usually I do find it a bit irritating. Um, I also don't like how it doesn't give you the percentages of the AHA, BHA, PHAs. It just says 10% of a combination of those. So for the most part, once you start using acids, you kind of Get, figure out which ones work best for you. Now, because they don't disclose what percentage of AHA or BHA is actually in this product, I can't tell you know, if it really will work for me and what's irritating my skin. It might be just some of the other ingredients, but this is definitely a pass for me. For me personally, it wasn't that effective. I found it to be irritating and there's a lot of other toners that I much prefer. For instance, this one from The Ordinary, I actually just found this in my skincare cabinet, which is really funny, but this is the glycolic acid. Acid 7%. I know exactly what is in here. That's one of my favorite things about buying from The Ordinary is you know exactly what you're getting in terms of concentrations and percentages. They're very upfront in disclosing that. So the Soothing Face Mist is nice. It is a rose water spray. So if you don't like rose, then you won't like this, but I do find it nice. I find the mist to be really fine and they reformulated this last summer. So it's gonna be different than the original ones, but I do like this for just misting my skin to keep it dewy between skincare steps. So let's talk about the serum. So my overall gripe about the serums is that they're very pricey for what you're getting. You're only getting half a fluid ounce of each product and you go through it very quickly. And it's also very expensive. They're $35 each and you're, again, you're only getting half fluid ounce and you can get all three for $85, but you're not really saving that much if you get the super pack, which is all three of them. So with that said, I do enjoy the serums for the most part. The Super Pure, again, with the niacinamide is my favorite just because of how well my skin reacts to niacinamide. Um, Super Bounce is also nice and really nice hyaluronic acid, although I do prefer the Hadalabo. Um, this one I just feel like absorbs really nicely into the skin and you get tons of it for a little less than what you would get in this little bottle. Now my least favorite is the Super Glow and I have been using vitamin C for many years and I think I don't really like this because I just don't find it to be effective. And the reason could be I use a little bit higher concentrations of vitamin C in my daily skincare routine. So this one just does not work for me. I know for some people who maybe don't use vitamin C regularly, they really love this. But the downside with this serum too is that I don't know what the concentration of vitamin C is that is in here. So for me, this was definitely not as effective as some other vitamin C products that I've tried. So this one, I would not repurchase again. Then you have the moisturizer. So priming moisturizer, which I've already mentioned, would not repurchase this again. I find it to be very irritating on the skin. The lavender oil for some reason and whatever other ingredients in here just give me whiteheads all over the face. It is a really nice thick creamy consistency, although very pricey, especially for the Glossier brand. It's $43 for this jar. The priming moisturizer is one I love. I love to use it in the mornings. I love to use it um, just for my skin, even if I'm not wearing any makeup or as a primer when I am wearing makeup. I find it to be hydrating on the skin. It absorbs really nicely. I also enjoy the sunscreen, although if you're adverse to chemical sunscreens, you won't like this. However, if you are looking for a clear sunscreen, invisible sunscreen, this would work nicely. Or you could also try the Biore sunscreen because that one also a chemical sunscreen, but completely invisible on the skin. And then we have the Zit Stick. So this one I also really like. You guys know I do find it quite effective on my skin. I don't necessarily think I would recommend it to everyone because it is benzoyl peroxide and some people just do not get along with benzoyl peroxide. Some people's skin, including mine on occasion, prefer salicylic acid as a treatment. Lately for me, I've actually been going back to the Mario Badescu buffering lotion. This is a niacinamide concoction. It has a bit of alcohol in it, so you can really um, smell the alcohol when you do use this, but I find this to be very effective on those like cystic bumps that I have underneath my skin. It doesn't make them go away overnight, but 
it does slowly diminish it over time. Okay, so that is a roundup of the Glossier skincare products. Now, there's definitely some good products and some okay products and some not so good products for me. I think in general, I find the skincare line to be for more of the, the younger audience. So I do enjoy it because it is a very simple skincare line. However, now that I am almost in my 30s, I'm turning 30 this year, I would prefer prefer some other ingredients like more retinols and maybe just some other ingredients to target you know collagen loss or maybe fine lines or even hyperpigmentation because I don't feel like the products in this range really target that stuff. I know vitamin C is supposed to be good for everything really but again the concentration of this must just be so low that it's not effective on my skin so one of the tricks that I have been doing with skincare products not just Glossier but just any in general if it is a really basic product and there's really nothing much going on with it like for example the priming moisturizer or the hyaluronic acid so the super bounce I will sometimes add ingredients to it like the boosters from indeed labs I just find that these work really nicely and these are ingredients that I want to be using on a regular basis so I kind of just incorporate it into some of the more basic skincare. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Like I said, there's some gems in the Glossier skincare line and some flops for me, but you'll have to let me know before you leave what you have tried from the skincare line and what you would recommend and what you would stay away from. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.